Friction. Uh, friction is uh, due to the interlocking of molecular hills and valleys between a surface and an object on the surface. Although surfaces may appear smooth, Cohen, if you zoom in, so even, for example, between your book, your binder, and the table, if you zoom in, although it looks smooth to our eyes, you would see on the microscopic or atomic scale, they would be all jagged and bumpy. And when those slide across each other, they interlock and they cause resistance. So key idea, friction resists sliding. And by doing that, it can resist motion, such as when I pulled on that table and it didn't move. Oh, but it can also create motion because when you walk, it's friction that pushes you forwards which is why it's so tough to walk on ice. Or when you drive, it's friction from your tires that pushes the car forwards, which is why it's so tough to drive on ice. So example one says, draw the direction of friction in each case. So friction resists the motion of the object. So you want to look, don't write this down, but right there, what way, Prith, is the block moving to the right okay friction will resist that motion so which way will friction be pointing to the let's all draw a little thing here and my abbreviation for friction is ffr i don't know why i put the r there most textbooks just do this force of friction but for some reason years ago i got in that habit and i can't break it the force of friction i don't know why but i do What about for a car speeding up? Well, don't write this down, just watch. If you follow the tire, if you follow the tire, right here, which way is the tire moving relative to the pavement? Not forwards, but backwards. So which way will friction push? Forwards. So I'm gonna erase this here, right there. Friction is what pushes the car forwards. And yeah, it's Haley and Newton's third law, forces come in pairs thing as well. The tires push backwards against the pavement. The pavement pushes forwards against the tires. How does the pavement push forwards against the tires? Through the force of friction. This also explains how when a car slows down, because when a car slows down, what you're really doing is you're telling your tires to apply it when you press the brakes, What's really happening is you're getting the tires to push forwards against the pavement. Although you think of it as backwards, but down there, please trust me, the tire is moving, is pushing to the right. Which way will friction act then? To the left or backwards or, hey, it slows you down. That's supposed to be dead horizontal. Let me try that again. Friction. When there's ice, what happens to friction? Bigger, smaller, or the same? Can you stop on ice very easily? Well, why not? Because friction can't be very big. Now, we're going to talk about why ice has very little friction in a second, but this is starting to explain a lot about driving and walking already. Stuff that you kind of have picked up, but here's the why. Turns out, the amount of friction depends on two things. The first thing it depends on is how sticky one object is relative to another object. Uh, ice and more ice, not sticky at all. If you take one ice cube, another ice cube, they, they almost have no force. Rubber on pavement, fairly sticky. Glue or Velcro, really sticky. We have a number that describes how sticky an object is. So I wrote down here, the amount of friction, it first of all depends on the types of surfaces that are in contact. This is represented by the, here's your new word for the day, phrase for the day, the coefficient of friction. We say that between any two surfaces, there is a coefficient of friction. It's a decimal number that describes how sticky they are compared to each other. And we have a symbol for it. Symbol is mu, the Greek letter mu. 
looks like that. It looks sort of like a handwritten M with a tail and the big dip for the loop. Sort of look like a cursive M. It is, yes, where our letter M comes from. Okay. What does a Greek cow say? Mu. It's a dumb joke, but it's an old joke. Okay. So this is the letter mu. It's a dimensionless quantity, so it has no units. But if mu is big, you got good traction. If mu is small, you got lousy traction. A couple of examples. Uh, rub, mu between rubber and tires is about 0.75. Mu between steel and ice is about 0.01. It's not quite frictionless. You will eventually stop. But it's pretty close. Steel and ice. Okay? So one of the things that the force of friction depends on, Courtney, is how sticky the objects are relative to each other. Or as I like to say, what's mu? I don't know, what's mu with you? What's mu? Okay? It depends on the coefficient of friction. The other thing that it sort of depends on is how heavy objects are. But I'm going to pause the video for just a second and convince you that that's not quite right. Uh, there we are. So, we have the force pushing the surface together. In simpler problems, it's mg, the weight, but that's only if you have no other forces in your question. If you want to be consistent and be able to handle other forces, Trevor, like someone pushing down at an angle or lifting up at an angle, really what we want is the normal force. In fact, if you can scroll down to the box in the bottom of the page right here, this is the only other equation you're going to get this unit. The force of friction is equal to mu times the normal force. I don't know the normal force. Oh, but look, 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 look. With a good free body diagram, you'll be able to figure out the normal force. No, this is kind of where everything, remember I told you lesson two free body diagrams was the key to the whole unit. If I do that right, everything else will kind of fall into place. Okay? So mu is going to be the coefficient of friction. Fn is going to be the normal force. Let's actually try calculating this. So first of all, let's do a little thought experiment. Consider the bench below. You know what? The bench is in the gym that you slide. Okay? It's being pulled by student number one across a rough surface, the gym floor. There's some friction there. At a constant speed. You know what? That's probably a phrase that we should underline. If you're sliding it at a constant speed, here's what it means. The force of you pulling is exactly canceling out friction. Yes? Constant speed, Newton's first law. Suddenly, a second student pushes down on the bench with a force F, like in this picture. Or you know what? Suddenly your idiot friend comes running along, jumps up, and lands on the bench, thinking that's going to be really, really funny. What's going to happen to the bench if student number one is still applying the same force? What's going to happen? If you're sliding it at a constant speed and someone comes along and sits on the bench, and this meant to be really obvious, what's going to happen? It's going to stop. Why? You know what? Let's look at this in detail. Let's call, because I really asked, what happens to the weight? Let's call that part A, part B, part C, and part D. Uh, when I say weight, what do I really mean? Which force are we talking about whenever I say weight? Okay, so does mg... Does the mass of the bench physically change? No. There's another force on it, but does the mass of the bench change? So does mg change? Which force is changing? Well, now this free body diagram has both mg down and this extra push f down. Is this bench sinking into the ground like quicksand? Is it flying into the air like Superman? Trevor, which force just got way bigger? Right? Compared to the original normal force, it just got way bigger. So the normal force 
Can I use uh, up arrow for increases? Gets bigger. What happens to the force of friction? Well, I just told you our equation Haley for cal calculating friction is mu times the normal force. Hey, if this gets bigger, what happens to the force of friction? Yep. Right? Uh, what happens to the motion of the object? Stops. Jane, that probably, I hope, seems a little bit Captain Obvious. Well, yeah, of course, if someone jumps on the bench, it's going to stop. But there's the physics of actually what's going on there. The reason it stops is that person is applying a force down, which forces the ground to push up harder so the bench doesn't sink into the ground like quicksand. And since friction is mu times the normal force, if the normal force gets bigger, friction just got bigger. And now you're not canceling out friction at a constant speed. It's going to slow down and come to a stop pretty instantly. And then you can beat up your friend. Or you can find better friends, which is really the, probably the better option. So how do we calculate friction? It's mu times the normal force. Friction is what times what? Mu times the normal force. What's mu? I don't know. What's mu with you? What's mu? Mu is I'll almost always tell you, although I'll also show you how we can calculate it. It's how sticky two objects are relative to each other. Yeah. So if, we, if the normal force is zero, it be nice to no friction. Yeah. Uh, which is why in outer space where there's no normal force, I can push something towards you and let it go, and it will keep going in a straight line at a steady speed. Right? That's how, that's how they move stuff in the ISS. Heck, that's what they were doing in that video that we just saw, for that matter. Right? Great question. And, and now, the, uh, partway through my explanation, I saw your eyes roll and your face go, oh, yeah, that seems obvious in hindsight. We've just derived, again, this is why we have so much respect for Sir Isaac Newton. Back in 1680, he was imagining outer space long before we'd gone up there. But holy smokes, he was right. It does work. We proved it experimentally. Next page. A student gives a big old shopping cart a big push on a flat, rough surface. Uh, let's think kind of a lousy paved parking lot, an older paved parking lot, so it's bumpy. Which of the following is the best force or free body diagram for the cart after the student has released it? Let me just pause the video for one sec. Well, heck, I'm going to let the video run. Here's what we're talking about. Which way is this cart moving? Oh, to the right, which for you guys is that way. So instead of a cart, I've got my chair. We're going to have to use our imagination a little bit. Instead of a rough surface, I've got the linoleum. But here's what we're saying. I'm going to give it a big push and let it go. It's after I let it go. Let it go. Oh, sorry, frozen people. After, Jaden, you with me? You're not supposed to look at your phone or anything like that. That'd be silly, right? So you ready? So which is the best free body diagram? Right there, right there, right there. But not right there. Hey. Are there four choices, Cohen? Once again, this gives us a chance to vote. Once again, how high we hold our hand up is how sure we are of the answer. Hmm. Who says it's got to be A, Mr. Dewitt? Got to be A. One, two, three. Yes, Prith? Is that OK? Four? Who says it's got to be B? C. What was that? B? You were going with B? C. D. I'm going to say lots. Some of you wimped out. Convince me. Matt. When I push it, after I let it go, is it speeding up or slowing down? I'm going to ask you the same question. I'm going to phrase it differently. When I let it go, is it accelerating to the right or to the left? 
So where must there be an unbalanced force pointing? Towards the? That's right. Which is the only diagram that has an unbalanced force pointing towards the left? What would D have to be doing? Speeding up. Speeding up. And again, this is very similar. A couple of days ago, when we looked at throwing a ball in the air, and I said, well, how can we have a ball moving up when all the forces are pointing down? I, it, this is the same situation. I just flipped it on its side. How can we have something moving to the right when all the force is pointing to the left? It's easy, Matt. It's slowing down. Yeah. In fact, you're right. This force right here is friction. Oh, and gravity down, normal force up. Okay. Um, would a full shopping cart slow down quicker than an empty shopping cart? Why? Bigger normal force. A bigger mg down and more inertia. But really, yeah, a bigger normal force. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which, again, in hindsight, yeah, I guess that seems obvious. I've pushed shopping carts, and it's harder to get a full shopping cart moving in the first place. Okay? It will come to a stop quicker if I let it go, but if I want to stop it really fast, it's tougher to stop it really fast. That's all inertia. Okay? Explain your answer using principles of physics. Have I, have I convinced you? in my explanation, then let's start applying this. So example four says, find the maximum force of friction between the mass and the ground for the following objects. You know what? Right here, let's write our new equation for friction. Friction equals mu times the normal force. And you can see in each question, I've given you mu with a little arrow. I'm, usually I'll draw it pointing to the surface saying, this is how sticky these surfaces are in relation to each other. OK. This is a job for a free body diagram. What are the forces acting on this mass? Get the obvious one. Gravity. Is this mass sinking into the ground like quicksand? Is it flying through like Superman? So there must be another force up. How big? The same size as mg. We call that the normal force. If we were tugging, what's the maximum force of friction? Well, friction equals mu times the normal force. I don't know the normal force. Oh, but look, 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 look. I know another force in my diagram the same size as the normal force. What force is the same size as the normal force? Oh, it's plug and chug. What's mu? I don't know. What's mu with you? What's mu? 0.35. M? 9.8. If you were trying to pull this object across the floor, what would the force of friction resisting you be? Two twenty-seven point four four. I'll go twenty-seven point four newtons. It's a force. B. Uh oh, someone else is pushing down on this box. Is that going to make it harder or easier to pull? Let's find out. What are the forces acting on this box? Get the obvious one. Mg down. Is this box sinking into the ground like quicksand? Is it flying into the air like Superman? So there must be a force up. Normal force, how big? I think it's going to be whatever mg is plus that 55. I'll just draw it exaggeratedly large like that. Now suppose we want to start moving this box across the floor. How big is friction? Well, friction is mu times the normal force. I don't know the normal force. Oh, but look, 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 look. I know a way to figure out the normal force. It's going to be mu. How big is the normal force here? Andy. 
Do you mind? I'm going to go mg plus 55. Gravity, bigger than gravity. So I always write gravity first if I can, then plus, so I know, oh, yeah, a little heavier. Now it's plug and chug. Friction is going to be 0.35, 8 times 9.8 plus 55. And yeah, you'll probably have to put that thing in brackets. Quick look at buddy. <coughs> he already has, thanks. 0.35 bracket, 8 times 9.8 plus 55. By the way, you could, Courtney, type it like this, 0.35 bracket 8 bracket 9.8 bracket plus 55. I just, I find all these brackets confusing, so this is why I almost always on my calculator use a times sign for timesing. It's just less to keep track of. I mean, that works. No, oh, I typed it in wrong. I stand corrected. Oh, 15, 55, Mr. Duke. I mean, that works, it gives me the 46.7, but do yourself a favor, type easier. 46.7 what? It's a force. Newtons. Situation C. What are the forces acting on it? Get the obvious one. What else? Well, now someone's lifting up. There is a normal force still, because it's not sinking in the ground like quicksand. But I think the normal force is smaller. So I'm going to go like this. I'll really exaggerate it so that it catches my eye and I notice it's smaller. This wants me to find the force of friction. OK. Friction equals mu times the normal force equals I don't know the normal force. Oh, but look, 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 look. I know a way that I can figure out the normal force. How big does the normal force have to be here? Can you see it? Yeah. Mg minus 55. Because <coughs> that 55 is canceling out some of the normal force. When I say canceling out in math, subtract, right? Reduced by. Mg. This is also why I wrote the Mg first in the other one, so you can see there's kind of some symmetry here. Yes? It's going to be 0.35 bracket 8 times 9.8 minus 55. For those of us that are exceptionally lazy, we can probably just change the plus sign to a minus sign since all the rest of the numbers happen to stay the same. That's because I was cutting and pasting the same diagram. Sorry. And I get uh, 8.19 newtons. Nice long yawn, yawn, Trev. Nice long yawn, Trevor. Yeah. So here's our summary. If I wanted to get A accelerating, I would have to pull with a force bigger than what? 27.4 newtons. Otherwise, this is not going anywhere. If I wanted to get B accelerating to the right, I would have to pull with a force bigger than, how big? 46.7 newtons. If I wanted to get C accelerating to the right, I would have to pull with a force bigger than, how big? A point one nine. You guys with me? Newtons. Friction is mu times the normal force. Um, how many more am I going to get here, Mr. Duick? Lots more. OK. I think what we're going to do But I got some cool videos to show you. 